Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to record a simulation and export it as a video. To get started, open any layout you want in the 3D world. I have a layout open here. I'll now go to the simulation controls and click export to video. You can also find this command here in the export group. So I'll click video. This opens the export to video task pane and you can see you have a couple options for the video's resolution, its frame rate, how you want to encode the video, and its quality. Right now the resolution is at 480p, so there's a red bounding box in the viewport that indicates what will be recorded, so anything inside this box will be recorded. So if I resize the viewport you can see anything above or below the box will not be recorded. Now if you go to resolution you do have an option called screen resolution and notice the red bounding box goes away because we're now using the height and width of the viewport as the video's resolution. So you can just resize it and this will be the video's resolution. Now you also have the option of pressing the F11 key and this will take you to full screen mode and you can record using this mode. I actually will go back by pressing the F11 key and what you can do if you want to go back to the default size of the viewport is go to the Windows group and click Restore Windows. Now usually I like to record at 1080p so I will set that as my resolution. For frame rate you can use 25, 30, or 60 frames per second. I'll use 25. For video codec you can use AVI, MP4, or an uncompressed QuickTime movie. If you're going to edit the video afterwards, I do recommend you use AVI or uncompressed, but otherwise if it's one and done, you just want to record quickly, you can use an MP4. I will use AVI. For quality, you can use low, medium, or high, or uncompressed. I will use high. And once you're ready to start recording, you can click this button here, or the same button here in the simulation controls. So I will click record. You now need to name the file in where you want to save the video. I will use the default name of the layout I'm using. And once you click Save, it will automatically start the simulation and the recording. So I click Save, and now notice the simulation is running. And in the Export Video task pane, notice you have a preview showing you what is being recorded and the time. Now notice there's a couple things missing from the preview. There's no simulation controls, no floating origin, no 3D World toolbar, no view selector, and no mouse pointer. So those are layer items and they are not being recorded, but everything else in the scene is. The components, the floor, the background, and even your camera movements. So notice if I rotate, zoom, and pan the camera, you can see in the preview that was recorded. Now once you're done recording, you can click stop and save, but if you make a mistake while recording, you can click the reset button and that will not create the video file. Now what you can also do while recording is change the rendering mode and the visibility of frames. So if I go to the 3D World toolbar, you can see for my frames, right now I have the frame features turned off, but I can turn them on. And you can see them here, and they are in the preview. Let's actually turn them back off. For rendering mode, we can change this to wireframe. Ho oh, ho, look at that. And that is recorded. Well, let's actually change that back to shaded. And you might notice that my headlight is currently turned off, so I prefer to have my headlight up top from a top-down view, but I can turn it back on. And when I rotate the camera and interact with it, that headlight is always shining bright like a diamond at what I'm looking at. So you notice it's shining from there and there. Now another thing you can do while changing the camera movements is to use your view editor. So if I go to the 3D World toolbar, click the view editor, I do have two user views from my layout, so I have this default view I like, so I can go there now. And I have a top view of the machine, which I can go to right now. Now you can see the view editor, this is a layer item, so it's not being recorded. So instead of interacting with the camera with the mouse like this, you know, you might move the camera a bit too much. You can't have a smooth movement of the camera using these user views while recording. So this looks fine, but I'm actually going to reset the simulation not save anything and I'm going to create a user view for this layout right here so I can see the process of the machine and the robot picking and placing parts so go to my view editor and then add that as a view and I can even rename it be process view there 
There we go. And another tool you can use for recording a simulation as a video is a fly camera. So this allows you to kind of create a program you want for the camera while the simulation is running. And I'll show you how to use that component now. Let's go to our eCatalog panel and we're going to go to our models by type smart collection, expand it, scroll down, and go to this group here called Media Toolkit. Now there will be a frame recorder. This was used to grab still frames of a simulation, so we won't be using that in this video, but we will be using the fly camera here. So I'll drag it into the 3D world, right over here. And if we go to the component properties panel, you can see that it's also called a view scripter. So you're creating a program or a script that will run when you run the simulation. And what we can do, we can create a default view. Let's say we want to go from here. We can make that a new view by adding it. And then we have this option here called add animated view. So we can go to this view between the left front and top sides. And instead of going there directly or jumping there, we can create uh, a certain amount of time it takes for the camera to go there. So right now it's at 20 seconds, but let's make that 10 seconds. And we're going to animate the camera movement by clicking this Add Animated View button. So instead of just creating a static view where the camera jumps there, we're going to animate it. And you can also create a delay or a wait. So let's say we want to go here. And we'll create a 5 second delay before we go to that new view. And what we can also do is create a wait, and this is based on simulation time. So let's say that our delay time might be about, I think it's about 40 seconds before we want to move. And I'll add it as a wait. And if you want to see the program of this fly camera, you can click the note icon here to open the note editor. Or you can go to the component properties panel, click the views tab, and then click the button here called open an editor. You can see here's our program. We're going to have a view called view. We're then going to animate the camera to view two and it will take 10 seconds. We're going to create a delay of five seconds, then go to view three. And it seems that, well wait, we actually have to type this in manually. So let's say we're going to wait until the simulation is at 30 seconds. And let's actually animate back to view two. So I will copy this and then paste it right here at the end. And let's see how this works. So I will close it out. And if you don't want to see the note icon here, just deselect the camera. And when I record the simulation again as a video, you can see the camera is now animating to that view I created while we're recording. Nice and smooth so far. There should be a delay. And you can see in the output panel what line of code the script editor is doing. So notice now we jumped to this view and right now the simulation is at 20 seconds so it should animate back to that other view we had between the left front and top view. And Yep, now the simulation clock you can see has reached 30 seconds so we're animating back to that view. And there you go. So once you want to save the simulation, I'm sorry, save the recording just click the button here in the simulation controls to stop the simulation or you can click the same button here in the export to video task pane. Now another helpful tool is to actually have a set run time for your simulation and that will automatically stop the simulation and save the video. But I still want to make some changes to the fly camera. So I want to start off at my default view here, animate to the top view of the machine, and then go to my process view. So let's reset without creating the video file. And I will go to my view editor click default. And you can see the fly camera does create these layout views for you. So I don't need them anymore. I'm going to use the ones I already have. So I'm just going to delete them real quick. And we want to start our default view. And let's select the camera here, the fly camera. Open its note editor. And we know we want to go to the default view first, so let's actually just type it in here as the name of the view and then we want to animate to the top view of the machine and I believe that name was called top view of machine so here I'm referencing the user view I created for the layout which you can see listed here in the view editor so it's called top view of machine and after about 10 seconds we want to go to our process view 
So let's create a delay of 10 seconds, and then we want to animate to that process view. And let's say it takes about eh, five seconds is fine. So if we close this out, let's actually start the recording. Let's see, we're now starting out, going to that top view. We probably want to create a delay before we start moving the camera to the top of the machine. There we go. And now there should be a delay of about 10 seconds before we go to the process view. And nice and smooth. And we timed it pretty perfectly, but what we can also do is create, or I'm sorry, connect a signal in the process machine here to the fly camera that will signal when the camera needs to move. So let's reset to not create the video file. Let's clear our output panel. And we do have to make some changes to our fly camera scripts. So we want to go to the, the default view first, but then let's create a delay. So I'll just copy that line of code there and paste it in. And let's start with a five second delay and then we'll animate to the top view of the machine. And then after that, we can go back to the component properties panel of a fly camera, go to the default tab, and you can notice here you have some options for a signal value, weight trigger, and you can either wait for a binary input, in this case a digital or Boolean signal, or you can set the value of a signal. So let's say we want the signal value to be true, and we're going to wait for a signal event to check the value of that signal. And then I'll click the button here called wait for binary input, and you can see it updated here in the note editor. So our input is called trigger signal, its value has to be true, and we're going to wait for a signal event, which is why it's true here as well. So let's cut that, and we're going to get rid of our delay, and now insert that input. So after we get input from the machine that it has a part, we're going to animate to our process view. And to do that, we need to wire the signal in this fly camera to the machine. So I'll go to the show group, select the signals checkbox here, and you can see the view scripter has what's called a trigger signal. And the process machine does have a compatible signal, which is why I see that fly button there. And we're going to wire the transition signal to the trigger signal. So I can point at the red circle, hold on the left mouse button, and drag to display a wire. And we'll now wire it to that trigger signal here. So let's hide these signal editors now. Zoom out. And let's start the recording again and see how this works. So we have our default view, and after five seconds, yeah, the camera starts moving. It'll go to that top view. And now the camera's there, and it's going to wait for the next transition signal, because you might have seen the robot already placed a part while the camera was still going to that next view. So now we have to wait to get the input signal, or the input value, and yep, now it goes to that process view. And it seems that's about 40 seconds long, so let's actually reset the simulation again. Go to the setting arrow here, and you have a couple options for the simulation runtime, the clock display mode, and whether you want to run the simulation in real time or in virtual time. When I'm recording a video, I prefer to use real time with one times normal speed, so what I see is what I get in the video. And right now we're running at infinite runtime, so the simulation will just go as long as it needs to. But I will click the custom button there, and I'll now use this display mode of hours, minutes, seconds to have 40 seconds. So I can just type in, well, it's 38, so let's increase that by 2. There we go. So once the simulation reaches 40 seconds, it's automatically going to stop and save the video for me. So I don't have to worry about clicking the button here. So let's exit out of that, and now I will start the recording again, and this time I'm going to save the file, I guarantee. And I'll move my mouse out of the viewport so I don't <laughs> accidentally move the camera. And there we go, so we're just going to wait for that part to finish in the machine, and the robot will pick and place a different part, and the camera will move.
now we have to wait for the simulation to stop at 40 seconds and then we should see the video playback for us. Yep, here we go. So the simulation stopped and here's our recorded simulation as a video. So the quality looks good and we have those animated camera movements. Great. Now after you have recorded the simulation you can edit the video. To give you a quick example I will open the video in Photoshop, which is what I'm doing now. And in Photoshop I will go to the top right corner and use the motion workspace and this will display the timeline panel you can see here for editing video and audio. And here's a video I recorded from the simulation which is just a series of still frames. If I press the spacebar you can see the video is now playing here. And let's say I want to make some adjustments so I will stop the video go to my adjustments panel here and I can use the brightness and contrast to make it a bit more contrast and less brightness there we go that looks fine you could also select a color if you wanted to so if I go back to the adjustments panel here use selective color I could isolate the whites and I could make them <laughs> yellow if I wanted to so now if I continue playing the video you can see the robot and the machine are yellow we probably don't want that so I'll stop the video and undo that change. What we can also do is convert our video to a smart object and apply a filter. So I'll go to the layers here and I will right click and then click the here called convert to smart object and now let's go to our filter menu here. Go to stylize and let's actually find the edges. Ho ho! That's a cool effect. And notice this is a simulation we recorded as a video and we're now editing it and applying our own type of styles. We could also add some text if we want. So let's go now add a video group and then add some text. And I will just call this machine tending demo. Okay, let's confirm that and then move the text into view probably want to make this a bit bigger so I will scale it up and then save that and what we can do we can add a fade here for the text so let's add a fade here and just drag and drop it there I can right click the fade and change it if I want its duration but one second is fine so if I press the spacebar again you can see the text fades in while the video is running here of the simulation and then boop pops out before the camera starts moving. Now I may also want to edit or create some type of animation for the text so I'll go to the video group here and just expand it and let's say when the text is about halfway during the video let's make this a keyframe by clicking the watch icon here and before we get there let's actually have our text be all the way over here. And just have it slide in. So now, if I run the video, you can see I have that transition there. And then we could have the text fade out if we want to just by dragging another fade here at the end. But this is fine. I'll well, now stop the video and I can go to the file menu, export, and then click render video and you can see I have a lot of settings here and once I define those I can then create the video I want by clicking the render button here. Alright this completes the video if you have any more questions please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com and as always I hope you have a wonderful day.